All right, so uh, in the last uh, set of slides, we focused more on hip dislocations, uh, femoral head fractures. Uh, the big problem, obviously, is osteonecrosis, which uh, we're trying to prevent with uh, urgent reduction. Um, osteonecrosis is a problem with femoral neck fractures as well, as well as uh, non-unions after repair. So um, this is a big topic. Um, it's a common injury, so many of you are already familiar with these, but um, let's go through some of the basic principles here. So uh, the physis closes roughly age 16. There's obviously a range here. Neck shaft angle normally is about 130 degrees, and aversion about 10 degrees. But again, there's a lot of variability here uh, between uh, uh, people and uh, if you go to different parts of the world. Uh, the anatomy varies, so, so do keep that in mind. Um, the uh, calcar is that dense, dense plate of bone, uh, which is uh, along the uh, posterior medial part of the um, proximal femur that uh, comes up a lot when we talk about uh, fixation strategies. So. Um, Here's uh, just the netter uh, schematic of the uh, blood supply to the femoral head as a review. Um, the uh, medial femoral circumflex artery and lateral femoral circumflex artery help to uh, um, provide the uh, blood supply uh, through the, um, the ascending cervical branches uh, shown here. These are the uh, branches that will come and uh, penetrate the head right at about this level right just below the articular surface. Uh, this is the reflection of the capsule right here. Um, so the you know intracapsular femoral neck fractures occur between here and here. So clearly uh, that can disrupt the uh, terminal blood supply to the femoral head. And remember in most patients, adult patients, the blood supply through the um, ligamentum teres is, is minimal, right? And again, the dominant blood supply comes from the medial femoral circumflex artery, which is, which uh, comes posteriorly. Okay. Classifications um, exist for femoral neck fractures. There's a couple you probably should be aware of. One is Garden classification. The other is Powell's classification. Um, Powell's classification describes an angle, um, which corresponds to sort of the vertical shear potential. Okay, so Powell's 1 is a relatively horizontal fracture. Okay, so biomechanically favorable. I mean, you can imagine that with, you know, weight bearing onto this, you're going to have uh, a reasonable amount of compression, which is good, right? Whereas the Powell's 3, right, weight-bearing on this, you're not going to get as much compression, and you can just see that you want to have, there's going to be this sort of, you know, shearing effect, right, as opposed to compression. So, um, mechanically, the Powell's 3 is, um, is much more susceptible to loss of reduction, displacement, and being more unstable with fixation. Okay, very important concept uh, that um, you need to keep in mind with fixation. Uh, also, when it comes to non-union repair, uh, the strategies, I mean, you essentially, you, you try to convert uh, these into something that's more like a Powell's one where you have compressive forces, okay? So a lot of decision making when you see these patients. Um, now thermal neck fractures occur uh, in the young trauma patients, um, okay, so that that is that you know, your average younger patient. 20, 30 something year old, uh, they're not going to trip and fall and break their femoral neck uh, if they have normal bone. Uh, uh, it's going to occur from high energy trauma. Uh, and when it does, it's, it's frequently a high Powell's angle. So um, in the patients that you often want to fix, um, those are the ones that are harder to, to keep mechanically stable. And then these also occur in the elderly patients, as you know. By far and away, uh, that's where they, you will commonly see them in due to osteoporosis, right? Low energy injury, um, and in some cases there may be pre-existing hip disease like arthritis. Um, but uh, typically, the fractures occur due to osteoporosis, low energy falls, and 
I talked about Powell's classification. In general, you have to think about femoral neck fractures like many other fractures. Is it stable or is it unstable? Okay, and certainly when you think about garden classifications, is one, two, three, and four. But really, you know, is it displaced or is it non-displaced? And uh, you know, is it stable or is it basically going to be unstable and require, you know, more significant treatment? So in young patients, um, non-displaced fractures can occur. Um, you have to be extremely cautious with these. Um, probably are best treated with uh, with ORIF before they have a chance to displace and then become a, a huge problem because they then put the patient at risk for osteonecrosis. So try to treat them before they get there. Okay. Displaced fractures. Um, clearly, native femoral head is the best. You don't want the patient to just end up with a total hip replacement. Um, so uh, you do what you can to try and uh, uh, fix these. Uh, the longer they're displaced, you probably have a higher risk of osteonecrosis. Um, so certainly urgent uh, open reduction internal fixation is, is recommended. I'm not so sure I would say emergent is absolutely necessary. This is not one of those things that I think we have good literature to support that you have to operate on these within six hours, for instance. Um, but I would certainly err on the side of uh, taking them uh, as quickly as possible. Elderly patients, um, displaced fractures, uh, clearly um, not going to allow the patient to be ambulatory um, and need surgical treatment. Non-displaced fractures, uh, unfortunately, have a risk of going on to displace. So standard of care pretty much is you end up having to operate on all of these. Um, Timing uh, is a big consideration, right? So uh, healthy patients, um, hopefully you can get them to the operating room right away. Um, in uh, elderly patients, uh, you may have medical clearance issues, but um, but typically I think what we've now found is that you try to get these patients to the OR within 24 hours. Um, I think there's been uh, certainly less emphasis on uh, a lot, doing lots of cardiac testing uh, for these patients, it's not shown necessarily to help. So uh, there's certainly a move towards getting hip fractures fixed uh, or uh, repaired or replaced uh, within 24 hours. For non-displaced fractures, ORF is a standard of care for elderly or young patients. Uh, it's got relatively predictable healing and as long as it's not displaced they, they, they can do well and this can be done percutaneously even, right? You just uh, can put in uh, screws and uh, go on to uh, heal with uh, you know uh, a predictable course. Um, ideal reduction if you're doing open reduction internal fixation is anatomic. It sounds easier said than done and maybe sounds simple but um, Surely, surely there are a lot of fractures in the body where you, know, you don't have to be uh, anatomic. Femoral neck is not an articular fracture. The problem is it's a uh, intracapsular fracture. It's going to be bathed in joint fluid. Uh, the blood supply is often disrupted. So uh, these just don't heal with abundant callus, for instance. Um, so if they're not anatomic and you know, they're not compressed, uh, they're typically not going to heal. Okay, so that's why in these cases you often have to be prepared to do an open reduction. I think if you have a displaced femoral neck fracture, you have to be prepared to do an open reduction to treat these. It uh, doesn't mean you always have to, but you have to be very, very critical of your reduction. And you have to be set up and go into the operating room uh, with that in mind. Um, fixation can be multiple screws in parallel. Uh, typically uh, can be three screws have to be compressed. I would also say that uh, having a sliding hip screw device is biomechanically superior, um, much less likely to collapse into varus, um, a little bit trickier to do. Uh, certainly there's risk of the head spinning when you place these devices in there, uh, but with proper technique and derotational pins, and a derotational screw at the end, uh, I think a sliding hip screw can be very effective for ORIF to displace femoral neck fractures. All right, so um, probably going to pause here.
and uh, we'll continue the rest of uh, this in the next set of slides.